What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas. My plan for today was to wake up very early, 7 a.m., drive to my dad's house, watch my younger sisters, open up their gifts, and get out of there in time to watch the games today. I should have just spent more time with the family. Every game today was absolute trash. And as I'm recording this, um, the Clippers still haven't officially secured the win. Kawhi just got busted up in the face. I hope he's doing fine. And maybe by the time this video is out, you don't know exactly what happened to him. I hope he's doing fine. But it looked like they didn't secure this W. I want to talk about every single one of the games to, to at least a little bit. Talk about what I saw. Because I didn't just sit here in this chair for 13 hours and watch basketball to not make a video. You feel me? The games were trash. Whatever. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, use the comment section. I'm going to give my opinions in today's video. You may disagree, but that is completely okay. Basketball is so subjective. We can have different opinions and still be cool with each other. You know what I'm saying? Call game. Let's talk about the first game of the day, which was the Pelicans and the Miami Heat. Now, this is a game that I missed part of it because I was driving home from my dad's house. And basically, I was listening to it on the radio, and everything I heard was Duncan Robinson from three. Duncan Robinson from three. But what I want to talk about, specifically about this game, is one player. And it ain't Zion. It ain't Brandon Ingram. It's precious, y'all. Oh, my God. Listen, the Miami Heat, in my eyes, have given themselves the track record of if they decide to keep and use their pick, whoever they use, I'm, I'm expecting them to come in and immediately be a rotational player. I'm expecting them to, to be an all-star caliber player eventually someday. Think about the track record in the last couple of years. Of course, Tyler Hero was putting up numbers we've never seen a Ricky do in the playoffs, apparently. Um, we saw, like, Justice Winslow, who... It's cool. Um, you know, the, I remember specifically last year, I think it was the season open for, Miami, for the Miami Heat. Justice Winslow had like 25 points. And we were like, yes, point justice. And I feel like I haven't seen him actually play basketball since that night. Of course, they got Bam Adebayo at like 14, 15. Like I said, they got Justice Winslow. In the second round, they got Josh Richardson, who of course, is a very good NBA player. I just assume that if they decide to use their pick, and that's a big if because y'all know Pat Riley is all about keeping the team good and, and up to date and hip. And a lot of that has to do with trading picks. But when they keep it, it's a blessing. It's it's a great player. And and Precious projects to be one of those guys. Like, I can see two years down the line, if Giannis is still with the Bucks, which I'm assuming he will be, and he's still fighting to win a championship, which I'm assuming he will be, Precious is going to be another one of those defenders that they throw at Giannis in a couple of years, and he's going to hold his own. That's just what I feel about him, man. Um, of course, Zion had a very good game, and Brandon Ingram had a very good game, both of them overall. But it seems like when Precious was switched onto these guys, he he was doing pretty solidly, man. And um, again, another situation where this is a, a championship caliber Miami Heat team, and they brought in a rookie to be a rotational piece for them, and he looks good. Um, somebody must have told Eric Bledsoe that this was a nationally televised game because he performed as such. Um, and I, you know what? Again, I don't want to start talking trash about Eric Bledsoe because I do think that he is a good NBA player. Do not get me wrong. But he just has games like this on national TV that gives like – like everybody that watches these Christmas Day games aren't like a diehard fan like maybe me or you. They're more casual, and they see Eric Bledsoe in the playoffs. That's their last memory. And then now this is their first nationally televised game, and he literally does nothing. I don't know if I saw him make a basket. I'm assuming he did, but I don't know if I actually saw him make a basket. Um, but I'm not going to talk too bad about the Pelicans because in their first game against the Raptors, I'm pretty sure it was, they looked pretty solid. Uh, just today, they didn't look too great. They were just giving up a lot of threes to the Heat. Who didn't look good in their first game, but looked good in the second one. They actually hit their shots this time around. Second game, I'm going to admit, like I said, I woke up very, very early to go to, to check out my sisters at my dad's house, watch them open their presents. So I was a little tired. And the second game is that place where I got that quick 30-minute nap in. And I feel like I didn't miss anything. The, the Warriors, we already talked about them in the last video, but I like what Steph Curry said after this game. Of course, him himself didn't have a very good game, but he was talking about how the offense needs to be better when their IQ, and I 100% agree. The amount of shots I saw chucked up by Kelly Oubre and, and Andrew Wiggins that were ill-advised made me sick to my stomach as a basketball fan. I'm not even a Warriors fan, just a basketball fan that wanted to see a, at least one of the games. This game is ending, and it was a 13, 14, I don't know, mathematics. None of the games end up being single-digit games. I just wanted one of them, at least one, at least one. And um, if I wanted to see that from the Bucks Warriors, I needed Wiggins to do more. I needed Kelly Oubre to hit a single shot. Um, and I needed Steph Curry to perform like Steph Curry. They kept putting that stat up on the screen of Steph Curry and his eight Christmas Day games. Only only averages like 13 points per game. Like he really struggles on Christmas. And that was no, no different today. Um, again, we're not judging Steph Curry just yet. We'll see when Draymond Green comes back how much he, he alleviates some of the Steph Curry pain. And uh, we'll talk about that. Giannis had one of his worst games of this, of 
probably this entire season we're going to see. And they still won by 40 because Chris Middleton is the man. Uh, I saw somebody on Twitter say that I think that this is the season where Chris Middleton starts to see the other 28 teams like he sees the the uh, boss of Celtics because I know he's a Celtic killer and if that's the case if he's killing teams like this all season it's going to be rough for the rest of the league if Chris Middleton is putting up 30 a night now the next game is the one I was so excited about because we have two teams that are projected to be towards the top of the Eastern Conference in the Boston Celtics who of course shout out to Jason Tatum he called a game in the in the season opener and then of course the the Kevin Durant Kyrie led Brooklyn Nets I was one of the people this offseason that wasn't immediate to look at this team on paper and say that this is going to be a contender this team is going to be at the top of the eastern conference because over the past couple seasons i feel like i fell into that trap a lot as a fan where i see a team put together a, a team on paper that just looks amazing and then they just don't fulfill those things and i'm not saying that the brooklyn nets are going to be the one to fulfill those things but i gotta say two games in this team looks magnificent in the third quarter with kevin durant literally couldn't miss a shot it gave me goosebumps bro that is the type of basketball I had missed from Kevin Durant after I think they said 560 days of not seeing Kevin Durant hoop it was just it was just a beautiful thing now again there's only two games in um but in those two games they look dangerous they look lethal Kyrie putting up 37 and 8 is ridiculous and and then this game specifically um, one of the biggest holes of the Boston Celtics, which is kind of preventing me from putting them in the upper echelon of teams, was exposed in this one, and that is that center position. Jared Allen was eating on the glass. Um, DeAndre Jordan was eating. And, of course, that w- that's been our criticism for the Boston Celtics over the past couple of years. They just don't have a center that you would trust against really good centers. And Jared Allen and, and DeAndre Jordan aren't really good centers, but they have one thing in common, as them boys are large, and they attack that glass, and the Boston Celtics had no remedy for those type of things. Jared Allen is is him, and the Brooklyn Knights didn't come to an agreement. It's probably the smartest thing that he could have done. If he is continuing to play like this, and he didn't even have like a super stellar, I don't even think he ended with a double-double. I don't even think he scored double-digit points, but his impact was large, and if this team goes into the playoffs, they are as good as a lot of people think they could be, as far as like winning the conference, there's going to be a couple GMs out there looking at Jared Allen, licking their lips with all the cap space that's available in 2021 and throw him an offer sheet that is going to be an extreme overpay for what Jared Allen is worth. That's just the way it works. And he's going to accept that. And the Brooklyn Nets got to figure out if they want to match that type of offer because he is going to get paid. If he rebounds the way he did this game, he defends the way he did this game, there's no reason for any other GM not to want to offer him a bunch of money when we're in a smaller market team with a bunch of money with nothing to spend it on. That's all I got to say. Uh, the Celtics, like I said, with them having them holes in the center position, it is it is a little bit tough for me. But, of course, they have Jason Tatum and they have um, Jalen Brown. who You can only rely on so much at this point. Um, they really need Kemba back eventually because right now it is like a two-man show. And I like Marcus Smart, and he had a good overall game, but he is not alleviating a lot of the pain from their two-wing players, so they need that to come into play. And I can't help but to think about this offseason and see that Miles Turner was on the table for them with the Gordon Hayward potential sign and trade, and they didn't pull the trigger on that thing. Um, I would feel a lot better about this team if Miles Turner was there. Maybe that's me being naive, but the first game of the season, Miles Turner had like six blocks. You know, he was doing the type of things that this team needs from their center, and he can shoot just as good as Daniel Tice was able to do last season. So that's all I have to say about the, this game. Next one, we had the Lakers versus Mavericks. Um, This is basically what I said in the beginning of the season. We were talking about the Mavericks. We're like, until Porzingis comes back, I, I think this team is going to struggle, and that's exactly what we've seen throughout the first couple games of the season. It's just so much pressure on Luka, and this today they had like Josh Richardson have a good game. They had Trey Burke come off the bench and have a good game, but overall, it's just not enough. Like, Porzingis needs to come back soon, and last time I checked, he's projected to come back early January and they need that because this is a conference that you don't want to play around with with only 72 games and 14 out of the 15 teams trying to compete for a playoff spot this is not time to be bad and through the first two games they've been kind of struggling even though in their first game they were this close but Devin Booker iced them up um it's going to be games like that very often for the Lakers side this is the reason why they are the heavy favorite to me again they lost game one but that's cool game two they came out and they were they were magnificent Montrez Harrell showed us why he was a six man of the year Dennis Schroeder looked really good and they're in conversations to extend him and I'm sure Lakers fans are are really happy about that this is the type of games that like they just have so much talent that like if you beat them in game one game two you're going to get a Montrez Harrell game and in game three you might get a Schroeder game and not to mention Anthony Davis is probably going to have a game or two so it's like 
the Sabres has looked really, really good, and I love the jerseys. Um, wow, I went through all of that pretty fast. And then the last one has to do with the Nuggets Clippers that is officially wrapped up since since I started this video. I hope that Kawhi is okay. Uh, I have to admit, I think in the last video I was talking about how when Luke Kennard was in Detroit, I didn't get to watch him much because it's, got, it's the Detroit Pistons, bro. Let's be honest. The... Even me as a diehard NBA fan that just loves basketball, I can't, I couldn't get myself to watch many Detroit Pistons games last season because they were one of the worst teams in the league. Um, and I'm not invested in them. Like, I could watch the Bulls. They're one of the worst teams in the league because I'm invested in that talent. I wasn't really invested with the Clippers. So to see Luke Kennard on this bigger stage, I was excited about these minutes he, he had today, man. Uh, I don't know what his stat line looked like, but he looked good out there. And Kawhi Leonard showed those playmaking skills that he showed last year in this game. And, and I'm not going to overreact. To the Nuggets starting off 0-2 because if you think about that first game, that was crazy. Uh, Buddy Hill with a tip lay-in after Harrison Barnes missed the dunk after Will Barton did this and after this and that. And then people are blaming the refs because the refs made a bad call on Jokic setting the screen. I'm not thinking about game number one. And game number two, they went against one of the best teams in the league. So I'm not overreacting. One thing we can say is that the second half of this game, it was promising for Jamal Murray because through the first game and then the first half of the second game, Jamal Murray wasn't doing anything. Uh, he was missing all of his shots. And I'm looking at the box score here. He ended with 23 in that second quarter. I mean, they had a little push when they were down by 20-plus. And then they ended up getting somewhat in this game. And then the Clippers pulled away after a patch or Beverly three and then a little Williams three. I, at the end of the day, I'm just hoping that – that uh, Kawhi is good, and I, I'm sure he will be. He may not play next game, but I'm sure he will be. I would – one of my biggest fears in life, and this is out of basketball, uh, kind of, losing my teeth is one of the biggest – I have dreams about my teeth falling out. So when I saw him get hit in the mouth and I – like when they showed the replay and it was a slow-mo and his whole jaw was like – I he, there's no way all of his teeth are still there. There's no way. And then he's a multi-millionaire, so he can get that fixed instantly. But if that happened to me on the court, I can't do that. So that's why I play with a mouth guard. Is that lame? Maybe. But I have to protect the whites. You know what I'm saying? The pearly whites. Um, that's all I have to say about the Christmas Day. Again, it was it was a dud. But I did enjoy watching basketball. I can't, even though all these games ended in double digits, I can't ignore the fact that watching basketball just makes me happy, even if it's a, a blowout. Um, NBA needs to stop doing the whole thing. And I understand Thursdays, I guess, are for football. Well, no, that's not even the case. They need to stop doing the thing where they give us a ton of games two days before Christmas, and then Christmas Eve give us zero. I missed some crucial games the first day of the big slates. I didn't watch Colin Sexton do his thing at Deer's Guard. I didn't watch Terry Rozier drop 40. I had to result to highlights because they decided to drop four games at the same time on the – stop doing that. Throw some of those games on the next day so we can really get the full experience of the NBA. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. I'll be back soon. Call the game.